Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Imagine that it's 5th August 1945, and you're the only person in Hiroshima who knows that, the following day, the US will drop an atom bomb in your backyard. It goes without saying that you choose the fastest form of transportation available to you and head out of the city as quickly as possible. Where would you go? It wouldn't matter very much. The goal would be to get as far as possible from Hiroshima, since you wouldn't know how far out the damage would extend. For many years, I've been advising people on what I've perceived as a coming economic crisis that would carry with it both a political crisis and a social crisis of epic proportions. These three arrows would be concurrent, with each one exacerbating the other two. Not surprisingly, many people have been either unwilling or unable to accept that such a major series of events might take place. However, the writing is now very much on the wall, and even those who don't really understand the crisis have a feeling in the pit of their stomachs that unfolding events will end very badly. So, we're at the Hiroshima moment, that brief time prior to the collapse stage of the crisis, when it may still be possible to get out of Dodge. And much like Hiroshima, the devastation will have its epicenters. They will be the major cities of those countries that will be most greatly impacted, before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. We can expect that New York City, London, Toronto, Tokyo, Melbourne and others will experience dramatic decline in quality of life. In fact, this is already underway, and people have begun exiting the affected cities, not planning to return. We can imagine these epicenters as the bullseye in this image. They represent the worst places to be caught in the coming years of crisis. But like Hiroshima, the areas immediately outside the city will be the second riskiest places to be. We might see them as the red ring on the target in this image. What locations might they be? Well, the fact that some of the world's most prominent cities will be the epicenter tells us that the countries in which they exist have devolved to the point that their economies are deeply in trouble. Therefore, after an initial hit in the major cities, the remainder of each country will experience economic turmoil, which will generate political and social turmoil. And again, this has already begun in such countries as the US, UK, Canada, the EU and Australia. Therefore, those who were located in, say, New York, may have already left for perceived greener pastures in Colorado, Texas or Florida. But this solution may well prove to be very temporary, as the same governments that created the strife in the cities will impact those who have sought to escape but who remain within the country's borders. Also, these locations are now filling up with refugees from cities who often find themselves unwelcome by longtime residents. But locations, then, would constitute the white band in this image, the next band away from the bullseye. Well, that might be those countries that are not part of the former free world, the host of countries that followed the US into prosperity after World War II, then followed it into destructive debt decades later. They would be the countries that have existed on the lower economic tier, failing to get on the A-team, but still having ridden on the coattails of the US via trade agreements. Such countries would be heavily impacted by the collapse, but with less distance to fall. They would therefore not experience such dramatic change. Such countries might include Mexico, Spain, Colombia, and a host of others. Then, even further from the epicenter, would be the outer rings, those countries that have taken on a minimum of trade and or other forms of dependence upon the US and its main partners. They would include Thailand, Uruguay and other far-flung underachievers. 
Uruguay for example, imports only about 10% of what it consumes, and almost all of that comes from other Spanish-speaking countries. It also exports only about 10% of what it produces. Whilst this has caused Uruguay to remain a sleepy little country with minimal dynamics, it has allowed it to sit out major events elsewhere in the world. In the last century, it sat out both world wars and the Great Depression. Therefore, those who recognize that their home country and its population centers may soon become less than livable, may find that, by moving to Café Aid Argentina, Chiang Mai Thailand, or Lake Chapala Mexico, may dramatically decrease the odds of becoming a casualty of the unfolding crisis. But there's another final ring on the target in this image. The white ring. This one goes one step further. In times of crisis, wealth does not vanish. It simply changes hands and, often, geographical location. Therefore, as wealth exits the more troubled countries of the world, it will gravitate to the less troubled jurisdictions. As the old saying goes, money flows to where it's treated best. When this occurs, the target jurisdictions will experience development, prosperity, and trickle-down advances in social conditions. There will, therefore, be locations in the world that are on the rise, as other locations are in decline. In the West, there are only a handful of jurisdictions that stand to rise as a result of the crisis. However, in Asia, there are many. Indeed, in each of the more productive countries of Asia, the mood on the street is one of opportunity. In Korea, Malaysia, Vietnam and others, the mood is buoyant. Asians fully understand that this is their century. On any evening out with Asian businessmen, we find that the former perception of playing second fiddle to the West is gone, that the only obstacle remaining to Asians is China. Asian industrialists regard their main objective to be building up factories and exports, to raise their position against their one great local rival. Over the coming decades, Asia will be in a literal gold rush, as nations compete to challenge China's present lead. The world is, therefore, a series of concentric circles of opportunity. The outer rings afford the greatest likelihood of prosperity. Conversely, the closer the individual is to the epicenter of the crisis, the poorer his chances are to thrive in what is certain to be a period of dramatic change. At such a time, it might be advisable for you to ponder which of the rings would best represent the one in which he presently resides, and whether it might be advantageous, or even necessary to choose another. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable, and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.